My name is Emily Harper. One day, in our 24th year of marriage, my father-in-law, whom I had been caring for alone for years, passed away. My mother-in-law had died 10 years ago, and since then, I had been looking after him. When he died, it felt like a huge hole had opened up in my heart. At that moment, my husband said, I'm moving to a mansion with my mistress and our child. A mansion. A mistress. A love child. I had suspected he had a mistress, but I pretended not to notice because I didn't want to worry my bedridden father-in-law. I knew that if my husband's affair became known, a divorce would likely follow, and I would have to leave the house. Without me, who would take care of my father-in-law? He would have felt anxious about that. So, I kept pretending not to know. Yet, as soon as my father-in-law passed, my husband handed me divorce papers, telling me to hurry up and submit them. Now that my father-in-law was gone, getting divorced didn't seem like a big deal. My husband handed me the papers with a mocking, here you go. Yeah, thanks. ATM, you've been real helpful. When my mother-in-law passed, the only one left in the family home was my father-in-law, who needed care. My husband laughed and said, My mom took care of my dad alone, so you can manage too, right? I replied, But if I do that, I won't be able to work part-time. We'll be tight on money. He retorted, How much do you even make from your part-time job? We won't have to pay rent anymore, so it's fine. It's not as easy as you think, I said. What about the kids' tuition? It's really squeezing us. The kids' tuition. Like for their tutoring. You shouldn't have sent them in the first place, he responded. I can go to tutoring and still made it into high school. That's true, but if you really want to work, why not do some remote work? Working from home still counts as a job. But if you're going to work, make sure you keep up with the housework and caregiving too, he added. If it comes to that, you're going to have to help. I insisted. He shot back, if you want me to help, then you shouldn't be working. I'm working to support you and the kids, so I'm not doing any caregiving. His words were selfish, especially since it was his own parent who needed care. He refused to come home, using the excuse of being busy. Why aren't you coming home? I asked. I'm busy. Do you want me to come home after the last train leaves? A cab would be expensive. Are you going to cover the fare? He replied. He was right, we couldn't afford that. In the end, I just kept quiet. I wondered what the point of marriage was, where that in sickness and in health promise had gone. During all this, my father-in-law was given a terminal diagnosis. I wanted him to spend his remaining days peacefully, but my husband had other concerns. Hey, how much inheritance does dad have? He'd asked, huh? He hasn't even passed away yet, so why are you talking about inheritance? I was shocked. If we wait until he dies, we won't know. We've got to find out now, he insisted. I tried to brush him off, but my husband went directly to his father and asked, hey dad, how much inheritance do you have? I couldn't believe it. It's not right to ask your dad that. I tried to stop him, but he wouldn't listen. Well, since you don't know, I have to ask Dad. Even so, hey Dad, if you don't give us the details, it'll be tough for those left behind. You've been running businesses since you were young, right? You must have quite a fortune. I had heard something like this before. My husband had been spoiled, relying on his parents for money when he ran out. I didn't know this when I married him, but once we had a family, it just didn't work. So, after we got married, he started working, but the jobs weren't stable, and he would quit quickly, leaving me worried. Even when his dad fell ill, my husband wasn't around, and he wasn't there when his mother died either. He'd always say, whether I was there or not, the outcome would have been the same. He'd laugh as he said that, but with that attitude, I knew he wasn't going to inherit anything. However, being an only child, if there was an inheritance, it would all go to him. One day, he asked, Hey dad, how much is it? 
My father-in-law replied, Twenty million dollars. My husband couldn't believe it. Seriously, that's amazing. Having a dad like you is great. After that, he left the house and never came back. He only stayed in touch to check if his dad was still alive. It wasn't concern. It was more like, he's still alive, huh? Whenever I said his dad was fine, he'd ask for more money because he was broke. I lost count of how many times I felt like an ATM. After the funeral, my husband casually remarked. He finally went, before disappearing. Then, a lawyer came to the house to discuss the inheritance. My husband showed up immediately, saying, It's finally happening. When it came time to talk, he didn't listen to a word the lawyer said. Don't worry about it. Just give me the inheritance already. The lawyer tried to warn him about potential issues, but my husband brushed him off. He signed the papers cheerfully and then looked at me with a grin. Too bad, huh? Not a single penny for you. Dad was pretty harsh, but inheritance is only for real kids. So just give up. I felt a wave of relief, knowing this marked the end of our relationship. My husband then demanded the money. The lawyer explained that he couldn't access it until the inheritance process was complete. That's a hassle. How long will it take? My husband grumbled. The lawyer couldn't provide an exact timeline, which frustrated him even more. He even accused the lawyer of planning to run away with the money. The lawyer assured him that he valued his career more than the money. My husband eventually left, and the lawyer and I exchanged looks. His expression seemed to say, you married a difficult person, while mine apologized for my husband's behavior. For a while after that, my husband stayed away. I took the opportunity to sell my father-in-law's house and find a new place. On moving day, he showed up. Hey, what are you doing? He asked, catching me off guard. Moving, I replied. Why are you moving? This house is empty now, and you're not coming back, right? It's also weird for me to stay here after the divorce, so I'm moving. He seemed suspicious. Or were you planning to take the money and run? I sighed. I can't withdraw any money yet, so what would I take? I'm not turning into a criminal. I just want a peaceful life. Just because you're obsessed with money doesn't mean everyone else is too. He scoffed. You never know what'll happen when money's involved. I shrugged. Think whatever you want. He then asked about the house. I sold it, I said. He looked shocked. You sold it without telling me. Isn't this part of the inheritance? Exactly, which is why I sold it, I explained. He immediately accused me of stealing. No, I didn't steal anything, and I have no intention of doing so. The money from the sale is part of the inheritance, so I handed it over to the lawyer. Why'd you give it to the lawyer? Sure, we can't withdraw the savings yet, but you shouldn't be handing over cash, my husband said. The lawyer told me it was necessary. If you're going to keep complaining, why don't you handle it all yourself? I shot back. I hadn't gotten a penny, but I was busy selling the house and sorting through his father's belongings. You should be doing this, you know, I added. I can't help it. I don't like that kind of stuff, he mumbled. Nobody does. Stop making excuses. So, you really gave the money to the lawyer? I told you I did, so it's not here, and it's not my concern, I replied. Fine, call the lawyer then, he demanded. Why should I be the one to call him? You can do it yourself, I said. I don't have his number. Call him for me. He always found reasons to make me handle things, but this would be the last time. I sighed and called the lawyer's office. After a brief hold, I got him on the line. Go ahead. Tell them to come over, my husband ordered. Tell him yourself, I'm not your servant, I retorted. Daniel looked annoyed but took the phone and started talking. See, he could do it himself. I was fed up with being made to handle everything. Hey, what did you do with the money from selling the house? Daniel asked the lawyer. I'm holding on to it, the lawyer replied. Bring the money and come here. The lawyer explained that the paperwork wasn't done yet, but Daniel insisted, just bring the money. With that, he hung up. What a rude way to ask for help. 
I realize how tough it must be to work as a lawyer. A while later, a luxury car pulled into the driveway, and the lawyer stepped out. I sincerely thanked him for coming on such short notice. He responded with a reserved, it's all right, though it was clear he was frustrated. Meanwhile, Daniel sat solemnly in the empty room, acting arrogantly. When the lawyer arrived, Daniel didn't bother to say hello or thank you. Truly a hopeless man. Hey, you, what did you do with the money from selling the house? Daniel asked. Oh, that? I could have explained that over the phone. The lawyer replied. What? I'm a client. I paid for your legal fees. No, I haven't received any fees yet. I'll send an invoice once everything is done. The lawyer corrected him. Well, no problem. I've got twenty million dollars. Your fees are nothing. So, what happened with the house money, and where's my twenty million dollars? The proceeds from selling the house are one hundred and sixty thousand dollars, the lawyer said. That's awfully low, isn't it? Daniel asked. The house is quite old, so it was difficult to find a buyer. But that's understandable, the lawyer explained. Got it. I suppose it makes sense. But as I explained to your wife, that money has been temporarily deposited into a bank account. You'll be able to withdraw it in a few days. So please wait until then. Where's the bank card? Even if I can't withdraw yet, I should have it, right? I'll withdraw it myself when the time comes. Daniel demanded. I've given it to your wife, the lawyer said. If you've got it, hand it over quickly. Yeah, yeah. Just hold on a second. Were you not planning to give it to me unless I asked? Daniel accused. Enough is enough. I never thought of doing that. If you want it that badly, here you go. I pulled out the bank card and related documents from my bag and placed them in front of Daniel. If keeping it meant listening to him complain, I didn't want to hold on to it. But he didn't care about my feelings. He grabbed the bank card and looked at the bank statements with a smug grin. It showed a balance of $20 million. Oh wow, look at all those zeros. I've never seen this many before. He couldn't contain his excitement, grinning uncontrollably. All right, now I can cover the costs of building my mansion. You're building a mansion? I asked. Yeah, a $6 million mansion. I'm a multimillionaire, after all. I can't be living anywhere less impressive, right? He boasted. I see. Sounds like a lot to handle, I said. Not at all. It's no trouble. I'm sure. I'm looking forward to it myself, he replied. Huh? What are you excited about? Oh, it's just something personal, I said. Right. Well, having something to look forward to is a good thing. Absolutely. So when can I actually withdraw this? He asked. In about a week, the lawyer answered. What? It's going to take that long. Aren't you working too slow? Daniel complained. There are many procedures to follow, the lawyer explained. Is that typical? No, it's just that your inheritance amount is so large, Mr. Taylor, the lawyer said. I see. If that's the case, it's understandable. One week then. Yes, that's right. And Mrs. Taylor, I believe you have the will that was entrusted to you by the deceased. The lawyer asked. Yes, my father-in-law handed it to me just before he passed away. He told me to give it after the inheritance procedures were completed. I replied. A will. What's that all about? Daniel asked, puzzled. Not sure. I assumed it's like a final farewell, but it's sealed, so I haven't looked inside. I explained. Since most of the procedures are nearly done, it's safe to hand over now, the lawyer said. Understood. Here it is, the final letter from your dad. I said, Humph, I doubt there's much in it, but I'll read it when I feel like it. Daniel replied. Then he left without even looking at the will, muttering to himself, a week from now. However, a week later, something unexpected happened. Daniel called me from the bank, where he was trying to pay the six million dollars for the mansion's construction. Hey, there's no money in the account. What happened? What do you mean, what happened? How would I know? I replied. I got the bank card from you, 
so you must have withdrawn it first. How could I have done that? I gave you the card and the pin together. Plus, I had no idea today was the withdrawal date. I pointed out. Then why is it gone? There should have been twenty million dollars, but now it's empty, he insisted. I'm telling you, I don't know who did it, I said. Who stole my twenty million dollars? Did you read the will from your dad? I asked. What? You didn't read it, did you? Maybe there's something written in there, I suggested. Oh, maybe you're right. I'll go home and check, he said before hanging up. It was frustrating how he just said whatever he wanted and then hung up. He completely lacked basic manners. I put my phone down, and a little while later, it rang again. It was Daniel. Come on, give me a break, I muttered as I answered the call. Hey, could you stop this? I'm not your wife or anything anymore. I was finally relaxing, but you just had to ruin it. It's worse than that. Daniel's voice was full of anguish. It really sounded like something serious. What's going on? What's this about debt? I asked, confused. Not you, my dad, he clarified. What? I read the letter, and dad borrowed a ridiculous amount, he said. What the hell is going on? Isn't it all written in the letter? I asked, trying to stay calm since this really has nothing to do with me. What do you mean? We're divorced, right? Your dad's debt isn't my problem, I replied. Did you know about it? Is that why you signed off on the divorce so quickly when I suggested it? He shot back. There you go again. How would I have known? If he wrote it in a letter, it means he didn't want anyone to know, right? Why would he tell me something like that? Yeah, that makes sense. So what is this all about then? He asked, still confused. I don't know, and I don't have any inheritance rights, so it's not my problem. Nor do I want to know, I said firmly. Call the lawyer, he insisted. I'm not your secretary, wife, or mother. Why should I call him just because you told me to? Enough. Okay, okay, don't be mad. Please call him. I'll head to the family home right away, he pleaded. Family home. There's no house anymore, remember? I reminded him. Oh, where should I go then? He asked, clearly flustered. Why don't you go to the lawyer's office? I suggested. Good idea. Fine, I'll meet you at the office. What? Why do I have to go? I questioned. Please come with me, he begged. Despite being curious about what was happening, I reluctantly agreed to meet at the lawyer's office. When I arrived, Daniel was already there, looking visibly irritated. You're late. I'm leaving, he snapped. No, sorry. Stay with me, I urged. Daniel's uncertain demeanor, fluctuating between assertiveness and vulnerability, almost made me laugh. Just then, the lawyer appeared. Hello, how can I assist you today? You should be able to go to the bank now. That's it. That's the problem. Why isn't there any money in the account? Daniel demanded. No money in the account. Well, that's understandable, the lawyer responded. What do you mean? Just explain. Daniel insisted. The twenty million dollars is gone. Well, inheriting twenty million dollars means you'll have to pay nine point one six four million dollars in inheritance taxes, the lawyer explained. What? Why are inheritance taxes so high? Daniel asked, stunned. Because it's twenty million dollars. It's just the law, the lawyer clarified. Are you serious? Did you pocket the money? Daniel accused. Mr. Taylor, if you keep this up, I could sue you for defamation. There was indeed twenty million dollars before the paperwork was done, but once taxes were paid, this is what remained. We used the rest to pay off the deceased's debts. Why did you do that without telling me? Daniel fumed. That was his final wish. He wanted any remaining money to be used to pay off his debts after his passing. The lawyer explained. How much debt did he have? Daniel asked. The deceased had been extensively involved in business when he was younger and incurred significant debt. Despite efforts to repay it, the total debt exceeded $20 million, which was insurmountable. The lawyer continued. 
Out of the $20 million, $9.164 million went towards inheritance taxes and the remainder was used to pay off the debt. That leaves a debt of $9.164 million, which you, Mr. Taylor, are now responsible for paying. There's no way I can afford that, Daniel explained. Regardless, since you've inherited it, it's your responsibility, the lawyer stated. Inherited. Then I'll just refuse the inheritance. Problem solved, right? Daniel suggested. It's too late for that. The paperwork is complete, the lawyer replied. Why didn't you tell me this before I signed? If you had, I wouldn't be in this mess, Daniel complained. I tried to explain before you signed, but you interrupted and signed anyway. Mr. Taylor, the lawyer responded calmly. So that's what it was. But what about the six million dollars mansion I'm building? What do I do now? Daniel asked, panic in his voice. There's nothing more that can be done from our end. What I can tell you is that you have a legal obligation to pay the remaining $9.164 million. The lawyer answered, What should I do? Even if I sell the $6 million mansion, I'd still have $3.164 million left to pay, wouldn't I? Daniel realized. That's right. Plus, selling that mansion might not get you the full $6 million. The lawyer added, Ah, what should I do now? Damn, if you had explained everything properly in the beginning, this wouldn't have happened. You're a lawyer, and I'm just a layman. You should have explained it all. What am I supposed to tell my wife? Daniel lamented. That's really tough, I muttered. When I glanced at the lawyer, he was smiling. Ah, this must have been the fun he mentioned before. So, didn't you get something? Daniel suddenly asked. Ha! Huh? Mrs. Taylor has no inheritance rights, so she hasn't perceived anything, the lawyer interjected. Are you sure you got nothing? Daniel questioned. I didn't get anything. There were whole zero million dollars left, so how could I possibly have anything? I replied. And if you did get some? Daniel pressed. If I did, it would have been deducted from the twenty million dollars, right? I stated firmly. Daniel was desperate to find someone to blame, accusing me and insisting I must have inherited something. He frantically searched for a scapegoat, but once he realized it was hopeless, he left the office.